You're hearing the third of three episodes around the text-to-image artificial intelligence algorithm known as Midjourney. The first dealt with the strange deja vu I felt, learning a new tool, a new technology that changed how I thought about the world. The second episode is about me acknowledging that these technologies can go nowhere but down depressing and concerning. This third episode is about how I made a music video with it. This is Jason Scott Talks His Way Out of It, a podcast about technology, history, and getting myself out of debt. Thanks to Daniel Boyd, Jeff Atwood, and the hundreds of other supporters on Patreon and elsewhere who have been supporting me and helping me get out of debt. After the initial thrush, the joy of working with a new tool and testing all of the limitations and edges that it inevitably has, I turned to thinking about some sort of project. I didn't know how long Midjourney would be sticking around, this bizarre AI as it called itself, and I figured maybe I could do something thematic, something interesting with all of this weird power at my disposal. In the process of working with this program, I discovered that it recognized certain people. There were names of celebrities and historical figures that it would do a reasonably good job of drawing, including my boss, Brewster Kale. After putting Brewster into Renaissance paintings and charcoal drawings, I turned to find out who else I knew that it might draw properly. Among those was MC Frontalot. Damien Hess, who is a very talented nerdcore rapper, considered the godfather of nerdcore hip-hop, whose work I had stumbled into online in the early 2000s, and who I then collaborated with on a music video for Git Lamp called It Is Pitch Dark. Frontalot gave me a wonderful song that he had composed about being inside of text adventures and the strange way it affects you. To accompany it, I used all of my documentary equipment and shot a music video in my basement from the time, with MC Frontalot dancing around, pretending to type, and then going to Steve Moretzky's house to have him record a sequence that was right in the middle. We premiered this video at one of the PAX events, and it was a huge hit from the get-go. Over the years, it's had over a million views, and from that time on, at various points, Frontalot would reach out to me about potentially collaborating on this or that project. Sometimes it was something as simple as producing a whole bunch of images for a slideshow that would run behind him when he performed solo on stage. Other times, we would plan or sketch out some sort of music video we could do together, much like the first one. Most of these didn't come to fruition, either because of a budget problem or simply the time and effort involved were way more than I could provide at any given time. Meanwhile, Frontalot's star rose. He was in a documentary called Nerdcore Rising about one of his tours, and I made it a point of seeing him live whenever I could. I enjoyed watching him perform, and he's a dynamic person on stage. Off stage, Damien Hess is a craftsman. He works extraordinarily hard on the projects that he does. They are not a light hobby for him. He puts the efforts and focus of an engineer into everything, from lyric sheets to web design to the actual recording process itself. This skill, by the way, also extends to his business work. He's registered with a whole variety of publishing organizations to ensure he gets compensated for his work. This scrupulousness and exacting nature means that working with Frontalot is an exercise in somebody who is both demanding but also understanding. And over the years, as I've worked with him on various projects, it's always been a joy to stand back when the final product makes its debut. So soon after getting Midjourney working, I started putting MC Frontalot's face into a whole variety of situations. 
specific artists like Rembrandt and Dali, as well as situations like deserts and snowy mountains. And with this simple prompt, I started producing hundreds of different MC Frontal Lot portraits and then sent them along to him for his amusement. He asked me a bunch of questions about them, and I started putting them up into a Flickr gallery so he could browse through them. Naturally, he wanted the full-resolution versions of everything and was keeping a record for himself. And the next day, he contacted me and asked, might it be an interesting thing to make a music video, to do something with this? And after giving it some thought, he had come up with a basic seed of an idea. In his 2007 album, Secrets from the Future, MC Frontalot raps about the fact that over time, all of your secrets that are protected with cryptography will themselves be split apart. And he ruminates on what the personal and societal effects of that is, and going off on all sorts of tangents from that basic idea. The song referenced your deepest secrets being completely revealed by 2025, and as we were slowly crawling towards that date, he figured it might be kind of fun to make a generated video based off the lyrics, and then he would edit them together in a sort of active slideshow of bizarre imagery prompted by his own words. I set off on this immediately for two main reasons. First of all, Life always gets in the way. Something always comes up that tells you maybe you shouldn't be spending time on this. And I thought it would be so much fun. I didn't want to turn around in a few weeks and remind myself that I had promised to work on this. The other reason is that the idea of taking an AI drawing program and applying it to song lyrics was so basic, so simple, such a natural progression thinking about this, that we knew somebody within 30 days was going to produce a video like this. And then what's the point? Trying something new, doing the ups and downs of this creative process under this new medium or at least approach was irresistible and was simple enough to launch into immediately. Frontalot wrote the script, creating a set of 78 different prompts that were variations of the music lyrics, and then creating 78 different file folders on a shared network drive. I began generating both with the prompt that he had given me and sometimes adding art styles and other prompts to mix in to ensure that there would be some variety among what was generated. As I've indicated previously, there is a very strange meta-language that arises in an environment like this kind of drawing program. We don't fully understand how it's ingested words. We know that it applies templates and styles and images next to words that are located in a proximal way to the original image. This approach generally works. And when it doesn't, it doesn't in strange, alien ways that are very hard to comprehend going in new. To that end, putting in phrases were producing all sorts of responses. Phrases like, you can't hide, general disapproval, claptrap, would cause something to be drawn that looked nothing like those phrases. They would be splotches of color overlaid onto stripes and some sort of human figure in the distance. But sometimes, based on whatever this system had been studying, a simple nonsense phrase like coax cable valentine yielded something really beautiful. Hearts floating next to a near luminescent coaxial cable. A work that felt, in its own way, creative and artistic. I did have other work to do, so this quickly became the way that I would wind down after a day working at the archive. I would go to the shared image drive, see which subfolders had not been given enough attention, and then regenerate art, sometimes adding phrases or variations of what was needed, and then presenting all of that to Damien. For this video, Damien was effectively the director. His idea his approach, and then me working as a combination set designer and props master, putting things into the collections that he wanted, and then hearing his feedback. 
Usually he would want me to do two or three images for any phrase because he might want to switch between them halfway. He would ask if a certain element could come in or if there was a way to re-ask the question to get the result that we wanted. There were only a few limitations in this system. In a somewhat clunky attempt to control what might come out of the machine, a number of words are banned in mid-journey. Words like nude, sex, ass, hell, and so on. And we all know exactly how well banned lists work. Because the system is so fluid and so strange, weird combinations of words could yield something of what you were trying to do. And among the lyrics in the song Secrets from the Future is the phrase half-ass schemes, which, it turned out, tripped this banned words list. And that's how we ended up typing in bisected donkey, which worked for various values of work. The system is clearly a beta. Some concepts, some approaches completely confound it. Human faces come out strange. Landscapes and words get warped. At the juncture from which this music video sprang, this machinery was not going to produce photorealistic images indistinguishable from a camera. It was definitely the feeling of a photograph studio falling into a lake of finger paints. Colors would smear, people would distort, and letters, <laughs> well, letters were not happening. In a weird parallel of how dreams work, you could not get mid-journey to print a single word consistently. It would always modify the language, change how the letters were formed, and if you were lucky, you could get a sense of something being there. But it was very rarely something readable. And for the next four or five days, I was located in a perfect dream environment, sitting down at this console, handing phrases of bizarre abstractness to mid-journey. Pictures would form. Pictures that were related or unrelated. Pictures that were exactly what I wanted or something I didn't know I needed. Producing vistas of landscapes and interactive electronics. Shifting from black and white to color as I asked it. And occasionally, every once in a while, giving me back exactly what I had hoped it would give me. When all was said and done, we had generated well over 300 images for this music video, some of them utterly disturbing and many of them absolutely transcendent. If you had been told that a machine had built this out of a whole series of observations of other artwork, you might be hard-pressed to believe that. Once I handed all the pictures over to Frontalot, he cut it together, ran a few tests, and less than a week after we had decided this might be a fun project, Secrets from the Future with AI-generated imagery went on YouTube. In a short time, thousands of MC Frontalot fans came out, many of them completely unaware that this technology had progressed to this point and being shown for the first time how strange and compelling it all was. It being a YouTube video, the commentary swings between absolute nightmare fuel and being happy that MC Frontalot is putting out new work. Frontalot was kind enough to include my name in the credits, and I've had friends contact me, delighted that the two of us are still collaborating. Having it pushed out in such a short time, we can decide whether or not something historical has happened. I suppose if I was in more of a mood to, I could build up an entire mythology that we were the first to do things this way, that there was nothing before us, and you couldn't point to any examples of a music video being generated 100% by a computer with a very fat asterisk next to it. But you'd be wrong. There's nothing but misery in the game of firsts. Creating something and then declaring yourself to be the very first who did it some way opens you up to a situation where anybody out there could point to an obvious ancestor, a clear inspiration from which this all came. And then you find yourself in a position 
which is, do you continue to defend your declaration Or do you look like somebody who didn't do the research, who just wants to get the spotlight and the glory? So nowhere in this music video does it call itself the first, the groundbreaking, the pioneer on the edge of the frontier. It's none of those things. It's a fun experiment between two friends, one of whom is extraordinarily talented in music and the other one who likes him a lot. And so, I think that's really all I have to say about the mid-journey AI. I think that in the years to come, we will see lots of variation in terms of artistic creation that's augmented with machinery and algorithms, and we'll have debates and concerns, maybe even laws, mores, and policies as to how this technology will be used. For me, for a kid who would spend endless times trying to design an 8x8 sprite on his Atari, or come up with how to do custom character sets on different machines. This moment that I'm living in, at such a late point in life, and I appreciate not just the fact that something exciting and new could be with me, but that it would give me an excuse to work for an extended period of time with a talented and brilliant person who, for the sake of art, let me bisect a donkey. This is Jason Scott Talks His Way Out of It. Thanks to James Bakoyanu, Josiah Lucher, Mark Pilgrim, Emilio Oliveira, Ernie Hershey, Craig Talbert, Michael Rubin, Dileep Reddy, Sean Kelly, Trixie the Cat, John Sturm, Eugene, Martin, Sembiance, and Anonymous, along with the hundreds of other supporters on Patreon and elsewhere who have been supporting me and helping me get out of debt. The name of the video is MC Frontalot Secrets from the Future. It's a great album, one of many that Frontalot has made. And I feel like I should mention one move that Frontalot did a number of years ago that truly, truly impressed me. As he was building his audience and his nationwide, perhaps his global, presence, he had been making a number of albums that all had a very similar theme. Science, technology, computers, role-playing, you know, nerd stuff. But then, out of the blue, he made an album called Question Bedtime. It's a rap album using the stories and mythologies of a variety of cultures, mythologies and fairy tales remixed, redone as different kinds of songs, using all of the skills that he has as a rapper to build worlds for children. It was an almost 90-degree turn from the albums he had been doing. And to be frank, he could have kept making the same album over and over and over again. But he chose to take the risk. He chose to go in a different direction creatively. And in doing so, he made a real masterpiece. And I encourage people who are known for something, for creating something thematic on a regular basis, that it might not be so bad to think a little bit and maybe wend a fairy tale of their own.